Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of the amazing podcast. Today we have Grace Melrose. She's a former WTA player who now runs a high performance academy for girls called Tennis Girl Nation, giving girls the mental tools to play their highest levels. She's a speaker and author of the number one new selling release on Amazon, Girl Boss Tennis, and is passionate about helping girls reach their dreams in tennis. Grace, welcome. I'm so excited to have you here today. Thank you, Emma. I'm so excited to be here and like big congrats on your podcast. It's Thank hard running so a podcast and launching it and putting out content like you do. So I'm excited to be here and yeah, love love what you've put out so far. Thank you so much. I'm really excited for the audience to get to know you, really get to know the face behind the Tennis Girl Nation and the new Girl Boss Tennis book. I ordered it and I can't wait to read it. Yes, I'm really, thank really you. excited. Of course, tell us a little bit more about what's in the book. So like, what can we expect when we when we read the book? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so I have, my, I have my copy right here. So for those of you guys who haven't heard of it, yet. Um, Girl Boss Tennis actually just came out um, while we're recording this podcast about a week ago um, on Amazon. So you can find it on Amazon. Um, and, you know, as the title suggests, it is for girls. Um, but more specifically, it is for girls who are playing competitively. So Emma, I know you and I have both been coaching for a long time. And when I started to coach, I really coached people of all ages, but very shortly after I started coaching, I really realized, man, I really, I love helping girls. And I love helping girls who were in the position that I was as a player, because there was so much as a junior player that I did not learn. And um, some of those things were really related to competition. Like, how do you have a strong mindset? How do you not let your emotions get the best of you? How do you stay mentally tough and like close out matches? How do you have that killer instinct? Um, you know, what, what should your strategy be? And, and how do you keep like a really clear strategy instead of switching it up 20 times during a match? Those are things that I did learn as a player, but I also learned as a coach. And as I started learning those things and really identifying like solutions to the, the problems of the girls that I was coaching, I just started to put it all down on paper. And, you know, eventually that turned into a book when I was writing it down and putting all of it on paper. I didn't really know that I was writing a book. I was just getting all of my knowledge on paper. I wanted to really document the things that I was coaching. I wanted to make sure that I was serving the girls that I was coaching to the best of my abilities. And that just so happened to turn into a book. So to answer your question, I was like a little more than you asked, but um, it is for competitive girl tennis players who want to grow their mental toughness, who want to understand like what is the best strategy for my game specifically. Um, it also really goes deep into some mental work. Like how can we overcome limiting beliefs? Because if you have a belief in yourself that I'm not good enough or I will never be as good as that player, you can work on your external skills as much as you want, but like, you're not going to start beating people that you perceive are a level higher than you until you change that self-talk. So very mental, but also practical match skills. And, you know, I've had girls that have picked up the book that are nine and 10 years old um, and girls that are 17, 18 years old. So I would say that's like a great range, like 10 to 18. Um, I really think that the girls that will get the biggest benefit from reading this are girls that already have like a pretty good understanding of their strokes. Our strokes will never be perfect in tennis, but they have a good understanding of like, uh, you know, they know how to hit a solid forehand and backhand and serve, but in a match, maybe some of that crumbles or they don't feel like they can bring out that practice level in a match. So that's really who it's geared towards. Um, but I would also say like, I think it's really fantastic for women league players too. Um, I've coached quite a few league players. And although the, the wording in the book is definitely geared more towards girls, like I really talk about like, hey, you're a girl boss tennis player. And maybe that doesn't apply to like a 40 year old woman. They're more like the lady boss. But I really think there's a lot of match principles that would be awesome um, for women players as well. So that's a long answer to your. No, to your it's great. It's great. And I'm just thinking about it. This is great for a lot of girls I'm coaching. And this is going to be my Christmas gift. I love that. That's, well, thank you, first of all, for yes. supporting. But yes. I think I think I really want as many coaches as possible to get this in their hands. Yes. Um, especially dude coaches that might not know fully how to relate. Yes. Yes. But, but obviously you're a an amazing female coach too. But like, yes, I think it's a great gift 
um, yes. a coach to a player. I obviously I'm going to read it first, but I'm sure it's I'm sure it's great because like you, I love I love so many of these things that you said. You know, like just right here, your strokes are never going to be like perfect. Like right now, like your strokes are not perfect. My strokes are not perfect, perfect. and you don't want to look for that perfection. You want to look these other aspects that are affecting yeah. your game. I really can't wait to read that, and and maybe your next book should be lady boss tennis i love it so it's geared more more towards those ladies and i'm sure a lot of them will buy this book and i would gift it to the ladies that i coach then you know just think about it totally and nothing is ever like a quick fix in tennis i do yeah. like to think that the stuff in this book is like it, it does have some quick fixes like hey if you struggle with nerves here's your strategy for how okay. to handle nerves. So there mm -hmm. is like quick fix stuff, but also it's just about like building that skill set. I think like an analogy that I like to use, and maybe like we've talked about this before, but uh, typically a player, whether it's a league player or like a junior competitive player, they're getting this much training on forehand and backhand skills and rallying skills and getting their rhythm and they're getting this much training on match play. So my goal is just to like even it out a little bit. I don't think that we need to shrink this. I just think we need to like get a little bit more here. So, I you know, see. will you immediately win the first match that you play after, after reading my book? Maybe mm -hmm. also maybe not, but like we're evening out and we're saying like all of this effort that we're putting towards building our tennis skill set also needs to go towards our competitive skill set too. And it's just, a, it's just another tool. Let's jump into the tennis girl nation. If you can explain to the audience, they don't know what it is, what it is exactly. And when did you start? So um, as I kind of mentioned, you know, as a junior player, there was many things that I did not uh, receive from my coaches, uh, whether it was belief or practical skills um, that I really needed to be successful or whatever. And so I really have made it my mission as a coach of how can I solve those problems for the next generation of girls? I had to go through it the hard way so that hopefully their time can be a little easier than mine was in junior yeah. tennis. And so that's really been my mentality as a coach. And, um, you know, I had a, a friend that encouraged me to, he's a, he's a fellow business owner and, and mentor of mine. And he was like, Grace, like, we need to get you like teaching this knowledge that you have online. And you really need to narrow down and like really figure out who are you called to serve in the tennis industry. And it took me like six months. The answer seems so obvious, but it took me like six months. I'm like, who am I called to serve in the tennis industry? And literally just hit me one day. I'm like, oh, I'm supposed to like go back and help the person that I was at that age. So that's one of my favorite quotes is like, be the person you needed when you were younger. And so Tennis Girl Nation really started from that. It's like, what did I need at that age? That, that wasn't just unique to me. This is happening across the board with a ton of girls. And so, you know, I, I started an academy um, based on uh, based on those needs, based on like specific coaching to girls that are having those unique challenges at age 13, 14, 15, 16. Really, we're, we're very inclusive. Um, it doesn't really matter the age. But girls who are playing tournaments who who want that mental edge. And so we're really a non-traditional tennis academy. Um, I don't run an in-person location. Um, I do, I am connected with coaches all around the country, like you, Emma. So I can definitely be a connector for people who are like, hey, I just found you. Where can I go train in person? Um, and I connect there. But what we do that's really unique um, is two things. We run events for girls uh, about four times a year where we'll, where we'll bring in WTA players and Division I tennis players or D2 and D3 um, and really expose the girls to women who have accomplished what these girls want to accomplish with their tennis. There's no better way to learn than from the per from, than from someone who has attained something that you want, right? If I want to go learn business, I'm not going to go learn that from someone who doesn't run a business. And I think that happens a lot in tennis. Not that someone who hasn't played at a high level isn't qualified to coach, but there is something to be said for, hey, I'm a 15 year old girl and I really want to play college tennis well, let's talk to the girl that's playing, you know, college tennis. Let's talk to the girl who's played college tennis, vice versa with, with women pros. And so we make it a super fun environment. It's very unique. Um, we really, we really feel, we flood uh, our retreats and our camps with um, just a lot of coaching, a lot of mental coaching. Um, and then we, we basically just send the girls home with like a newfound belief in themselves, a newfound like inspiration and clarity on, okay, this is exactly what I need to do to reach my goals. And we've reached, I mean, hundreds, since we started our events, we've reached hundreds of girls now 
Um, and that number is only continuing to grow. And we've had people tell us, I'm never, ever one to throw anyone else under the bus. But one of the best compliments I got after running my first camp is like, hey, you guys are better than IMG. And I was like, whoa, that's so cool. You know, because like, I know my heart is right in running these things. I know that I put a lot of intention and care into making sure it's an awesome experience. Um, but that was so cool to hear that of like, man, we we really are like doing things well. It's not just I feel like we're doing things well, you know, that's how people are experiencing it too. So that's one leg of what we do. And then the second leg is an online program that I developed. And this was actually how Tennis Girl Nation started was with an online program that I developed. It's called Match Play Breakthrough, and it's a virtual coaching program. So think like top court, but specifically geared towards um, girls. Again, you know, kind of our niche is like that competitive yeah. tennis player, um, who really wants tools to break through and reach the next level in our match play. Um, and we go through weekly coaching video lessons on like, how do you build your consistency in matches? Because if you can hit 20 balls in a row in practice, but that's not happening in a match, we don't need to train that skill set. We need to figure out why is that not translating? And so, you know, we have weekly lessons on consistency, on mental toughness. We do visualizations together. And then every single week, there's like an activation where it's like, hey, we're going to go integrate this new knowledge into your game. And this is how we're going to do it. Um, and, the tr and the program spans for three months. And I've had, um, we've probably had about 50 players go through it at this point. And just the feedback has been awesome. Again, is anything... Um, going to be everything for your tennis. No, yeah. but why do we show up for private lessons and clinics and all that? Because we're continually working towards this goal. And my goal with the match play breakthrough program, that's a part of tennis girl nation is again, evening that gap of like, this is how much your training you're getting on your skill set. This is how much you're getting on your match play. So if we can really devote three months to evening that out a little bit, you're going to have way better results in your tournaments. Does that mean it's going to yeah. be the next weekend after you join? No. no. Um, but if you're dedicated and can apply that stuff, man, you're going to be successful. So events, uh, match play breakthrough, and then of course the, the new book. And really um, the, the overarching goal of what we do is just to inspire and give girls the tools to reach their dreams. So even if somebody reaches out to me and says, hey, you know, we can't come out to one of the camps, but we, you know, one of the camps, but we live in Nevada. Who do you know? Great. Here you go. And please let us know if we can be a resource for you. So if you're listening to this, um, I would love it. If you reached out, if you need any um, help, Emma is obviously an amazing person to reach out to as well. And um, has been through, you've been through so much in your tennis, Emma, and in your coaching, but just want to be a resource for, um, for girl players and their parents. From my experience, what I can say, I've never been to any of the camps that are like that growing up or coaching. Yeah. Um, it's very well organized and it's really geared towards the girls that need it at their competitive level. And they really learn a lot, so much in those two, three days. Yeah. So much. And then I love how you make them write everything. It's very, it's involved. It's not like just one um, one side is just coaching. It's very, it's a two-way street, right? You right. always, you're asking questions, you're keeping them involved. And I, I really, really like that because that's so, so important in coaching, which you probably know. If we're just yeah. talking, 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 you don't know what's coming in, what's getting right. out. Even if you're coaching a, a seven-year-old, right? Or a 18-year-old, it's different. Like, you know, they're looking at you, but you're like, okay, what did I just say? What did we right. just talk about? tell me and they're like uh, a lot of times that happened to me and that's why I'm like okay stressing more and more I will rather talk less or like talk about one thing throughout the practice than just like yeah. go on and on and then they leave and they're like no idea what happened yes right keeping them involved either if that's writing it down during the practice or during the camp or after whatever it is I really like that aspect as well so yeah i i really recommend anybody watching and listening that especially if you came this far already in the episode um means you're interested really check out uh, the campsite when is the next one when is the next so camp we actually anyway? don't have our 2023 schedule oh. we'll, we'll probably release it in like february i i, I need see. a month or two off just yes. to not think about it but yeah probably february 2023 we'll probably drop our dates okay sounds good are you a person that sets goals 
I do have a vision of what I would like to achieve with my life. I, I think it's both and like, I find that I'm most successful when I have like clarity on where I'm going, but a lot of people have clarity on where they're going, but they can't connect it to today. Mm -hmm. Um, and one of my favorite speakers, Ed Milet, um, he talks about, uh, the word proximity and how a lot of us fail to achieve our goals because we perceive that we're further away from our goal than we actually are. So if my goal is, for instance, to play in the U.S. Open, but I think that's five years down the road, my action today probably won't be very high. But if I know that I'm playing in the U.S. Open next year, all of a sudden today matters and what I do today matters. So sometimes it's really helpful for me to draw my goals, my future goals in a little bit closer and say, okay, what if I actually was doing this this year? What would my activity look like today? Um, because I think the daily habits are what matter maybe the most and, and maybe even more important than that long-term vision. Cause that's actually what determines if you get there. So for me, Yes, I have that vision of where I want to go, but what really helps me is drawing that in and then saying like, okay, what are the things that I need to do to get there? And then I kind of break down my goals into monthly goals. So if my goal is to, you know, run four camps next year and reach 500 people, what do I have to do today? Like, what are the 10 things that I have to do to make that happen? And what, it, what are the main three that I could focus on this month? That's kind of how I break it down is like monthly goals to reach that long-term goal. I really love how you put that. And, and that's yes. stuff that I learned from other, other people too, yes. like filling my mind with like, oh, this is how they do it. This is how they do it. So it's definitely like just listening to pe how, how to effectively goal set from other people has helped me a lot. That's awesome. I love that. Thanks for sharing that. What is one piece of advice you'd give to someone starting in your career? I think number one is just to have, um, have an attitude of service. And I've said that like quite a few times, I wasn't even planning on saying this today, but it's just come out of my mouth, like serve, who is your, who is the audience you're called to serve? Who are you there to serve? And I think that um, at least growing up for me, a lot of my tennis coaches had massive egos. It was more about them than it was about me, which is why I think I had a terrible experience with them. And so I made a decision like, no, it's really about the player first. Does that mean that I'm not a leader? No, of course not. I'm still going to lead. I'm not, they're not running the lesson I am, but my heart attitude is to serve and to help them and to be someone positive in their life and making it about them instead of about me. So that was something I, I actually did. I'm not saying this was easy for me, but that's something I did very early on that I think helped me be really successful long-term and helped yeah. me get here because my heart motive was like, I like at that point, I didn't know that 10 years from then I would be a published author. I just was like, you know what? These kids deserve my best. And yes. that's what I'm going to give them. And that attitude, I think, has given me a lot of opportunities in tennis because my heart is right. Um, and my heart is truly to help. And I think that goes a long way. Mm -hmm. um, and then I also think just embracing the season and the time that you're in. I There were many years where I was coaching where I didn't want to be in the exact position I was in. I was physically burned out from coaching at a club. I didn't love running, you know, I was great with juniors. I didn't love running ladies clinics and I still had to do ladies clinics. Not be, ladies, I love you if you're listening to this, okay? But just in the moment, it was a lot easier for me to, you know, do junior clinics and do that. And, and I think that there were times where I really wished for that next season, but I think that like so much of Tennis Girl Nation and my book and all of that, all of that was really cultivated during those years where like, I wasn't a director of tennis. I didn't even really have like, in a huge label at one of these clubs. I was just going in coaching and doing the best I could every day. Yes. And that gets old really quick. Um, and so I had to really like have a lot of perseverance and just say like, okay, again, just over and over every day, how do I show up today and do a really good job? Because that, that idea of working hard when nobody sees you working hard, when you're burned out, continuing to show up with a smile on your face and choose to make it a really good day for the people you're working with that builds so much character in you. And those are the days where you will, you will look back, you know, if, if you have a long-term career in tennis, you'll look back and say, oh my gosh, like those were the years where I actually was formed and I actually learned my message. So just don't reject the monotony of coaching, which it can be sometimes. Because we do get burnt out, but I love, I love that what you said. 
at the end of the day, we're, we're here, we chose this path and we're serving others. Yeah. And we have to think about that kid, that client, that lady, whoever is on the other side. And we have to think about them first and how they will get the most out of today and not how we feel and how burnt out we are. But obviously it's tough at the beginning right? It's tough at the beginning because you have to grind. You have to work for those hours. You have to work to get, you know, we both had to grind a lot at the beginning. It doesn't matter of our background careers, like um, how good on WT we were or how good I was in college. To start my coaching career, I need to grind at the beginning. And then you grow. Then you grow like we are doing now, right? A few X years later, but there's no easy way at the beginning. You know, you will not just get clients just like that. You have to really show up and be there and you will be recognized for that. And yes. that is going to pay off down the road. In your opinion, what's the most important like personality trait um, or strength someone would need to work as a tennis coach? That's a great question. <laughs> um, I don't know. I <laughs> The first thing, the first thing that came to my mind, understanding what you specifically are good at. So I almost think this is like, I almost think this varies for every single person, but like, no, no one is ever like the magic of being you and you, Emma, like the magic of being you is no one can present the information that that you do in the way that you do. Right. Yeah. That's the magic of being me. Like, even if yeah. you and I coach the same things, we're going to do it in our unique way. Mm-hmm. And so I think understanding what is, what do I bring to the table? What is my specific skill set? Why would someone want to come take a lesson with me versus yes. this other person honing in on your strengths and then owning that strength instead of trying to be many things, be you have your strength. If you specialize in technique, specialize in technique. Don't try to, I mean, yes, learn over time, but also understand like, wow, I'm really gifted at communicating technique to people. So you want to really focus in on what, what really sets you apart. I think that makes a great coach instead of like, like for me, I think I'm good at coaching the serve. I think I have a good grasp on it, but I'm definitely, I definitely more specialize in like really helping, um, helping people with their ground strokes, like really getting really technically sound, smooth and timing on their ground strokes. Right. And even more than that, even more than the timing and all that stuff, I really focus on the competitive things. Right. So I know that like what I bring to the table that's different is that, so I'm not going to probably spend all of my time trying to convince everyone at my tennis club that I can really coach the serve well. Well, of course I want to grow my skill set, but I want to really own what I'm good at. So I think that that quality would be knowing what you're good at and focusing and specializing in those things. Let's say we're looking up some coach, Nick Boltieri. I just, you know, he just passed away or I'm just name, putting some big names. Patrick Morto, Moro Togolu, I don't even know. I still don't know how to say his last name. If we're like looking at their videos and how they're doing things, right? And trying, if we're trying to be like them, like why? why? I'm right. I'm completely different than than right. them. And we are different, but I will take some of those things and I will apply it to my way of coaching. I'm not going to try to be someone I'm not. And people yeah. can feel it. People can feel when you're yes. authentically being yourself, yes. when you're speaking from a place of knowledge, or if you're just like trying to act like, you know, what exactly. you're talking about. Yeah. exactly. Okay. So since you're an amazing entrepreneur, what's your favorite productivity hack for entrepreneurs? Well, I think it actually goes back to the goal setting thing. Yeah. Um, so I actually learned this from a friend of mine who is also my health practitioner. Um, she's on Instagram. Her name's Emily Morrow. Okay. And um, she just, she's a fab, I mean, she's in the health space, but just brilliant entrepreneur. And um, she did a training. I want to say it was a year ago. Maybe at this point it was like two years, but she basically talked about looking at your year. And looking at your goals in terms of projects. So if I know that like, you know, I want to launch a podcast, that would be a project for the year. And then underneath the podcast, there would probably be five different, five to 10 different bullet points of what I need to do. And then if I want to, you know, start training for myself again for tennis, right, that would be a project. So you want to look at these bigger areas of your life and your business 
in terms of projects. And then where a lot of people get stuck if they is they look at all of these things, they get really overwhelmed and they don't take action. So what she talked about um, that really has impacted me and it's become a practice of mine is write down all of the projects that you want to achieve for the year. Start a nonprofit, right? Um, earn, uh, you know, increase your revenue by this percentage or whatever, whatever that project would be that that uh, fits into that category. If you want to call it a goal, you can. I like the word project. It just helps me. And then you look at the year and you're like, okay, well, where does it make sense for this to fit in? Does this make sense for me to start my podcast in January when, you know, I'm going to be coaching this many hours in the court, whatever. And you space it out and you say, okay, January's projects are this. I'm only going to do this project and this project. February's projects are going to be this. And you map it out so that you, you don't feel that sense of overwhelm of like, oh my gosh, I have so much to do. Because if January, all I need to focus on is making sure I get my Instagram up and running, that's my project, then I don't have to worry about my nonprofit and my podcast and my revenue and this, because I know that's for March. Like it's already planned out that I'm going to get to that in March. And so I can like mentally relax a little bit and know that's a project for that month. It's still on my radar. It's still planned into my year, but for this month, it's this. So I think just really making sure you spread out your projects so that you don't feel that massive sense of overwhelm that comes with like, oh, I want to achieve so much, but then I'm so paralyzed with like, where the heck do I start? I, I struggle with that, to be honest with you. I feel like I have to do everything. I, yeah. I got to do everything right now. And it's, then you get overwhelmed and then you don't do anything well. Exactly. Right? Going into the next question right away. How do you find that balance? I, I actually probably need to uh, write those down after this podcast because I've been, in, I've been challenged a few times to do these non-negotiables. Um, I don't, I wouldn't say I have those specifically right now. What I will say um, is physical movement is always a must. If I find myself in a routine where all I'm doing is working and I'm not moving my body, my mind is not clear. So physical movement, even if it's a walk, we just got a Peloton. I love that thing. Um, so just like physical movement um, is key. And then, and then really making sure my nutrition is dialed in is like so important for me. I start to, you know, especially when you're busy and you, you eat whatever and you grab what's quick, that can really affect you uh, big time. So I would say like health and nutrition. And then for me, it's like having a really good morning routine and a really good evening routine. So I try to, I try, maybe my husband will listen to this and be like, huh, but I try <laughs> to not be on my phone first thing in the morning. I try to not be on my phone uh, before I go to bed. Cause if I'm on this thing, right, I'm either comparing, working, distracted. Um, and it's not like, sometimes it can be restful to just sit and scroll, but um, for the most part, not as much, especially morning and evening. So I would just say like, you know, really just keeping my mornings and my evenings free um, and having a good cutoff time for like, I'm not going to solve all of these problems today. I'm going to do my very best. And then I'm just going to, when I get to a point where I really feel like I put it all out on the table, I can stop. And I yeah. can trust that like, like not everything in entrepreneur world is grind. If it is yeah. grind yourself down, like yeah. work, hard work is so important, but mm -hmm. then there's also like, Oh, I work, you know, 15 hour days. And it's like, well, that's like truly not doing you any good either. So just mm -hmm. really be effective during your work time. Try to minimize distractions, try to set goals that you can cross off your list every day. And as soon as you've done a sufficient amount of those setting performance goals, which is a big thing that I coach on the tennis court, setting performance goals for your work. Like I have a um, free tennis parent training that I'm working on. So um, it'll probably be out in January. Um, and right now it's, it's going to take hours to develop it. I really want to make sure the content is great. I've got to make sure I record it well. And then I've got to go in and edit it, upload it to my, um, to my website and all of that. So that's going to take a while. So I've been super overwhelmed with this project. And just yesterday I was like, I'm just going to set a performance goal that every week I'm going to work on this thing for four hours. So when I start my day and it, and I'm setting my goals for that day, it's like, Oh, can I get in two hours today? And then I cross it off. So when I finish my two hours, I'm like, I accomplished that it's not finished yet, but I like put in the work towards it. So um, yeah, that's something that's been helpful for me. Can you tell the listeners where they can find you online? Yeah, absolutely. And today's been great. Thank you so much for having me. I love our conversations and I feel like it's awesome that people just got to listen in yes. on like what our normal conversations sound like anyway. Um, so yeah, you guys can find me um, on Instagram at tennis girl nation. 
Uh, also tennisgirlnation.com. So for any tennis parents listening, I did mention the tennis parent training that I'm working on. Um, you guys can go to tennisgirlnation.com and that should be live January, 2023. Um, and then of course you can find me on Amazon. Girl Boss Tennis on Amazon makes a great stocking stuffer. Um, if you're a coach, really great gift for your girls. And um, yeah, would love to connect if there's anyone who um, has questions or wants to talk about where your daughter is at and you just want some feedback, would love to hear from you. You can, you can uh, use the contact form on my website, tennisgirlnation.com, and then click on contact and send me an email there. Thank you so much, Grace. Once again, always a pleasure talking to you. I always learn a lot and I hope you guys got something out of it as well and i'm sure soon i'll invite you again on the podcast let's do it let's do it thank you so much for having me thank you thank you for listening if you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast please share it with others post about it on social media or leave a rating and a review to catch all the latest from me you can follow me on instagram youtube facebook and tiktok at tennis with emma Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.